Hi there, it's Megan Mitchell, the founder of Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep. And today I am going to go over one of our social work shorts updated in 2023. And that will be our ASWB practice questions number two. So we will have three practice questions. We will read them. I'll give you time to answer the question on your own. We'll break it down and then I will give a rationale. So a tip about practice questions. Content, you need to have a solid content base for this exam. However, practicing practice questions is just as important as studying content. And why is that? You need to get repetitions in of working through practice questions so that when you go into test day, you are prepared. And that's because there's a lot of reading comprehension that goes along with the ASWB exam. There's keywords that you need to pull out. And there's other different terms and words that are important when reading through a practice question that you need to pull out when you're breaking them down. So if you need a little bit of assistance with that, I definitely encourage you to check out our five W's video. That is going to give you some really good tips and some strategies to help you break down those practice questions. Read each question two times through, and this is definitely important on test day because our adrenaline will be going. It is not our home environment. It is a different environment. It's just different than what we do day to day. You want to make sure that you're not rushing. So you want to make sure that you're reading each question two times through. That second read through, you're picking up on details you might have missed in the first read through. How many times have you, not just for this exam, um, but prepped for a different exam, maybe in college or in grad school, and you get your answers back and you're like, oh my goodness, I totally, that was a goof because I missed reading through some of the information. We don't want that to happen on test day. So make sure you're reading each question through two times and picking up any details or key terms you missed on the first read through. Always ask yourself, what is this question asking? If you can't answer what the question's asking, you need to use your five W's tools. You need to read the question again because you're not going to be able to get the answer correct if you don't even know what it's asking. So those bigger stems, those longer ones that seem a little bit complicated or the wording's a little bit hard to work through, read through it a second time. And then to also kind of slow yourself down a little bit, read all answer choices before selecting an answer. If you're someone that is quick to just pick an answer and move on, I definitely suggest that you do this step. And that's because you don't want to automatically think, oh, it's B, I see this answer here without looking at answer choices A, C, and D before moving on. And with these answer choices on the ASWB, it could be just one or two words that differ from answer choices. So you want to make sure that you've read all the answer choices and you've thought about them and analyzed the answer choices before selecting an answer. Let's go ahead and read practice question one. I will read it and I'll give you time to answer. So if you want to stop the video at that point um, and work through it on your own, you can. So here we go. Number one, a social worker has been asked to assist an elderly client in making a decision about an independent living facility. In the initial interview, the client repeatedly discusses her family and past experiences as a nurse. What is the social worker's most appropriate response to the client? A, ignore the client's discussion and redirect her back to the interview. B, continue the discussion of her past experiences. C, refer the client for psychiatric evaluation. Or D, administer a geriatric evaluation scale. I will give you a few moments here to read through practice question number one. Okay, what's important here to pull out of the question stem? We're working with an elderly client. We don't have an age, but that usually means over the age of 65. And we are working with this client to determine if it's going to be appropriate to move into an independent living facility. Another important thing, when did we meet this client? Initial interview. So you need to think back to the helping process and where we are with the client. When we are first with the client for an initial interview, we are engaging, we are building rapport. 
In this initial interview, this client keeps talking about her past experiences and her family. What is our most appropriate response? And most questions mean some of these answers may be appropriate, but there's going to be one that given the question clues that you have is the strongest. Thinking of the helping process, pulling out all those clues, which one ties it together best? So I would go ahead and first rule out C. C is not appropriate. We don't need to refer this client for a psychiatric evaluation. There's nothing in the question stem that demonstrates or suggests that that is an issue. So C would automatically be out. We never want to ignore a client. That is, is not appropriate when, especially in the engagement phase, when we're trying to learn more about the client. That would probably mean we're not going to show the client that we are really listening and really trying to build a strong therapeutic alliance. So A would be out, ignore the client's discussion, and redirect her back to the interview. I don't know about you, but if um, I've been in medical situations before where they're just reading through the list, they're not taking any time to get to know you, it's not a place that you want to go back again. Um, so A is out, C is out. We're also going to eliminate D, administer a geriatric evaluation scale. That's not the most appropriate response right now, right? It may be warranted later down the road, but that's not where we're at right now in the helping process with the client. So process of elimination, our correct answer is B. Continue the discussion of her past experiences. And why is that? We don't have any knowledge that there's a safety concern presently. So if that's where she would like the conversation to go in this initial interview, that's where we go. That's where she probably feels safe and she feels comfortable. And we actually could get a lot of really good information about discussing her family and her past experiences. So we're going to be very client-centered and meet the client where they're at. So for question number one, we are going to do B, continue the discussion of her past experiences. That would be most appropriate at this time. Moving on to practice question two. A social worker in a hospital setting is part of an interdisciplinary team. The team is preparing to discharge the client. The social worker disagrees with the other team members about the discharge plans. What would be the most appropriate action for the social worker to take? A, clearly state their opinion and ask to be removed from the decision-making team. B, contact the patient's family and share your opinion directly. C, focus on the values shared by the team and use conflict resolution strategies to discuss conflicting opinions. D, voice your concern and then agree to the majority opinion. Go ahead and take a few moments to read through this one and answer. Okay, what's important here? Setting. You are in a hospital, and oftentimes in a hospital, you would be working on an interdisciplinary team. You might be working with doctors and nurses and OTs, PTs, medical specialists, nutritionists, nursing staff. It's very common that you'd work on an inter interdisciplinary team. So you need to have knowledge of what that would be like, knowing that everyone comes from different disciplines. Not everyone has the training that social workers do. And here there's a discharge about to happen and the social worker is not agreeing with the discharge plan. So there is some sort of conflict, um, difference of opinion. What would be the most appropriate action for the social worker to take? So knowing that you have to work with different people from different disciplines, what should the social worker do when there's a disagreement? What can I rule out? A, clearly state their opinion and ask to be removed from the decision-making team. That would not be in the best interest of the client to just say, because I don't agree with you, I need to be removed from the team, especially because we don't, there's nothing that tells us this is a safety concern or an ethical dilemma that would put the client in danger or the social worker in danger. So A is out. To just be removed, that's not actually helping the situation at all. That's just avoiding the situation. So A would be out. Another one that would be out is the flip side of that, voicing your concern, but then agreeing to the majority opinion. You don't just want to say, okay, here's my concern, but I'm just going to go along with what you all say just because that could potentially be dangerous, right? If after some time and some discussion and some problem solving that's appropriate, that might be the case, but you should not just automatically agree because you don't want to um, 
be in conflict with others' opinions. So A is out and D is out. And then we're definitely going to rule out B, contact the patient's family and share your opinion directly. That would not be appropriate either. Um, that is not showing much trust amongst the team. And that could actually cause more harm than good because they might be concerned that um, the team is not making appropriate decisions. And it, you really have to start within the team first to work on that conflict resolution and discuss what's going on. Where's the breakdown? Where's the problem happening? So given process of elimination, the correct answer is C, focus on the value shared by the team and use conflict resolution strategies to discuss conflicting opinions. You're really going to problem solve here. You're going to say, you know, let's look, take a step back because they might not see the, the biopsychosocial approach that we take, right? They're not going to, to see things from a holistic systems approach. They might not. So we want to make sure that we're you're bringing the team together to focus on the goal, the values, and then also if needed, using conflict resolution strategies in a healthy, productive way to make sure that the, the best needs of the client are being met. Conflict is going to happen. We don't run away from it. We don't disagree. We try to find strategies to help come up with solutions. Our last practice question is number three. A classroom teacher contacts the school social worker about a six-year-old student who has just transferred from another school. The student comes to school tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate on lessons. What should the social what should be the social worker's initial action? A, make a joint report with the teacher to Child Protective Services for neglect. B, encourage the teacher to make a report to Child Protective Services for neglect. C, meet with the parents and the child to obtain more information. D, refer the child to the school nurse for a medical exam. Go ahead and take some time answering this one. Okay. Setting, you are at a school and the teacher is the one that reached out, which often happens if you've worked in a school. The teachers are kind of on the front lines here, so they might see some things that we would not because we don't spend as much direct time with the children. Um, what else? Student just transferred from another school, so this is a new student. Um, student seems tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate on lessons. So there's something going on here that needs some more follow-up. What should the social worker's initial action be? That means like, what should the social worker do first? So for this question, what do you need to think about? If there's answer choices that give you something about reporting to CPS, you first need to determine if that's an even appropriate step at this time or not. At this time, we do not have enough information yet to report to Child Protective Services for neglect. So... I would rule out A, make a joint report with the teacher to Child Protective Services for neglect. Not enough information yet. New student, what's going on? Let's find out. B is out. Encourage the teacher to make a report to Child Protective Services for neglect. Once again, don't have enough information yet to be able to, to make that termination. D is also out. Refer the child to the school nurse for a medical exam. There's nothing in the question stem that could concerns any sort of medical issue. If it said the client was limping or had a cough or something that would relate to the body systems and would need medical attention, we would want to get the nurse to check them out, but that's not appropriate given being, untire being tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate. So given process of elimination, the correct answer is C, meet with the parents and child to obtain more information. You might be thinking, why would we meet with the parents and the child? We want to welcome the child into the new school setting and see what's going on, right? There could be a reason why the child, first of all, transferred. Maybe they are, have been displaced. Maybe they are um, housing insecure. Maybe there is a, a loss in the family or the parents are unable to find the means to, you know, be able to 
clean the clothes. Maybe they don't have access to a washing machine. There could be a, a variety of different reasons. So we want to make sure that we're coming from a supportive stance and collecting more information and providing support if needed. They might say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, we, we don't live in a place that has a washing machine. We're working multiple jobs and the child's up late. Or I've heard people that have been in very unsafe conditions where they are up all night because a neighbor's really loud or the landlord um, has cut off the water, stuff like that. So we need more information first. We want to come from a supportive lens. So we're going to get more information before automatically referring to Child Protective Services for neglect in this case. That is all of our questions for today. If you're looking for more ASWB study content, we have tons of different materials and we have something for everyone. Check us out at agentsofchangeprep.com. We have a blog, we have a podcast, we have tons of fun things that we do on social media. So make sure that you're also checking us out on Instagram and Facebook. And if you have any questions, here's our contact info, agentsofchangeprep at gmail.com. We will be sure to get back to you. And like I said, there's something for everyone from free to paid. There's practice tests. Just go ahead and check us out. And lastly, of course, thank you for tuning in. If you are enjoying this content, make sure you subscribe so that you can know when new content comes out. And I just want to commend you on taking the step to sit for your exam. And remember, you got this. Um, show yourself self-compassion and know that this is, you have a journey ahead of you, but with determination and hard work, you can do this. So thank you for tuning in.